season nine. So many more places to go. Hi, I'm Jane Stafford from the School of Weaving, and I just have to tell you what's coming your way in 2025. We are going to continue on with eight episodes. Um, and in every one of those episodes where there's weaving involved, we're going to be working with a four shaft and an eight shaft project for every single structure that we're studying. Now, so many of the things that we're going to be doing this year, we already started it last year. And you know, you create an episode and you're just getting started and you see so many more possibilities of where you could take that structure. So many p ways to overlay new ideas, new concepts, new graphic, new use of color. So sometimes we just have to come back and add another layer and that's what we're going to do for many of the first episodes. Continuing on with guest instructors, we're bringing back Rebecca Logan, we're bringing back Barbara Mitchell, and we have Elizabeth Hill, Lisa Hill, is coming to do two episodes with us. Terry Madison is coming to do an episode with us. And gosh, I think that's it. The, and you get me, I'm in there too. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think the best thing to do would be to just work through all of the episodes and show you some of the pieces that we're going to be working on and the ideas and we'll just walk through one after another after another. Okay, here's what we're going to do in episode one. Episode one, you get me, you get Barbara Mitchell and you get David Schultz from Australia. He's coming to us via Zoom. Anyway, it's super cool. Our team is getting bigger. We have more input coming from other weavers, which is so important to bring the best we can to you. Anyway, David sent us something last year for our last episode on Double Face Twills that just blew me away, and I can't leave it. We have to take it further. He did a large study of color and weave ideas based on our little... Uh, our little plain weave sample that we did way, way back in season two. He took these and he took them and brought them into life on this huge big piece of fabric. And it's all overlaid on tutu twill. Now, the squares in these are remarkable. They're things that we don't normally see in color and weave on a tutu twill. We do it all the time, but you know, you could look at this from afar and think it was possibly plain weave, but it's not. This is on tutu twill. Not only did he do it on tutu twill, he did it on one three and three one and on basket weave. So we have to come back and look at this because what David fed to me last year via the dream team, I've taken it and overlaid it on double face twills. Now we have a piece of fabric done on four shafts that has log cabin on one side and a completely different face on the other. So it's truly a double face twill with completely different sides. It's done on four shafts, needs eight treadles, but I'm going to show you how to weave it easily with just four. Let's take another one. Let's take dark, dark light. Here we have dark, dark light. You can see it. That's what we have on one side. We have a completely different pattern on the other side. And in some places on the other side, we've got solid colors. So tons of potential. Then Barbara Mitchell comes into the game. And Barbara Mitchell is bringing color and weave concepts to block double weave. We're just working on these pieces right now, but this is the first piece that has come into the studio. Absolutely exquisite drape and hand, and so much glorious pattern. Anyway, that's what you get in episode one. Episode two, we're bringing back Rebecca Logan. Rebecca Logan came last year, and she did... Uh, the Powell Method of Drafting, Shadow Weave. And while she was here, I asked her if she would mind creating an episode specifically to isolate motifs in Shadow Weave. Could we create a motif and place it on inside a bigger graphic? 
You know, I'm graphically driven for everything that I design. And she came back and she's done it. So we have a four shaft project, an eight shaft project, but she's added another little thing to it. What if we superimpose shadow weave onto basket weave? So that's what we're doing for this episode. Super cool. We have a very simple, simple start on four shafts. Uh, but this looks different than so many shadow weaves that go selvage to selvage, all right? So there's a whole series of playing with this style of creating a motif that's floating on a background of either horizontal or vertical lines. Then Rebecca took that up to eight shafts where we can do curves and much more complex things. This is kitchen pottery sitting on shelves. How cool is that? We don't usually see shadow weave used this way. At the loom, she takes it further. She has a whole section in there where she works on fiber works and shows how she created other motifs working in that program. And for me, it's the first time I ever got to be on the dream team. And I had so much fun bringing my style of design and graphic to shadow weave. So this is a four shaft piece that I designed and it was so much fun to be in the dream team. First time ever for me. <laughs> anyway, so that's what we did in episode two. Last year when we were preparing for this, Rebecca had been given her assignment to do her shadow weave and then I get this little email from her with this proposal. Jane, I just really, 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 really want to study diversified plane weave. I've never woven it. There you go. I said, fill your boots, Rebecca, do whatever you want. One of the things that I have read about diversified plane weave and that I've seen in many of the articles is that the fabrics are typically um, used for upholstery, for bags, for heavier weight, heavier weight textiles. Well, you know me, you know us. Our goal is always to find ways to bring incredible drape and hand to structure. So here are our diversified plain weave baby blankets. Super soft, super delicious, absolutely yummy. Uh, and this is the four shaft project. So what I have learned through Rebecca is that the power of diversified plain weave is found in the tie up. So she created five baby blankets for the four shaft version and four, uh, five baby blankets for the eight shaft version. She's gonna walk you through all of the theory step by step by step. I just wanna quickly show you the textiles on the table and show you that the threading and the treadling are identical for every one of the pieces that I'm gonna show you. The power, the only thing that changed was the tie up. So front and back front and back they're totally reversible front back stripes and solid solid front solid back that's pretty cool <laughs> for a four shaft diversified plane weave pretty darn cool have to say all right let's look at this pile this pile is our eight shaft. We have more blocks to play with. Front and back. Look at the curvature in some of these textiles here. Front and back. Front and back. How did we go from curves to squares and rectangles? We can do it all. Same threading, same treadling. All the change happens in the tie-up. So how cool is that? In episode four, we're going to take a deeper look into deflected double weave, which we started last year. I have long admired the work of Elizabeth Hill. She is known as Plain Weave on Instagram. You've uh, probably seen all her amazing patterns that she publishes on her concept around meta weaves. Anyway, I sent her an email and I said, hey, Lisa, do you want to come to my studio and play? And like five seconds later, I got a big yes. So 
I'm so happy to let you know that Elizabeth Hill, Lisa Hill, Plain Weave is coming to do two episodes. Her first episode is her take on Deflected Double Weave. We have a four shaft project, beautiful, beautiful scarves with denting. The fringes are coming through the denting. They are so exquisite. There's two different patterns. Eight shaft weavers are going to want to weave these too. I just have to point out the hand and drape is absolutely extraordinary. So we have two scarves for our four shaft weavers. And then for our eight shaft weavers, I asked her to create a gamp. She calls these gampkins that you could use them for napkins. So I asked her to create gamps using the twill profiles. The, our, the twill threadings that we had in season four twills for our small threading small threadings gamp, I asked her to overlay that on deflected double weave and create a series of gamps, which she has done. And my goodness, it is absolutely extraordinary. We have a whole slew of them. I'm not going to show them all to you. That's it. That's enough. Okay. But you have to come and see this episode. Episode five. Oh my gosh. Episode five is going to be Terry Madison, a member of our dream team, a good friend of mine, a former student who used to come here for Weaver's Retreats. She's going to come and teach us how to make bags. Uh, she is Magpie Dye Studio on Instagram, if you want to check it out. This woman is so talented. She does everything. She knits, she sews, she spins. She's an extraordinary dyer. She's a weaver. And uh, anyway, I want to learn how to make bags. So this episode is really for me. I haven't sewn a darn thing since I probably made Eben a pair of shorts when he was two, and he's 37. So it's been a long time since I've sewn anything other than a hem, and I want to learn how to make these cute little bags out of my leftover hand wovens, and I've asked Terry to come and do it, to come and do it, and she's coming. So, super cool. That's what's happening for episode five. In episode six, we get Elizabeth Hill back. Uh, Lisa is coming up in the spring, to film two episodes with us. And we're going to break up her episodes when we air them, simply because those gampkins, all of those gamps that she's going to present to you in episode uh, five are going to take, no, in episode four, are going to take a while for you to weave. So that's why we would put Terry and her bags in between. And then for episode six, you get Elizabeth back again, and she's going to help us pull things out of those gamps and weave them into scarves. But before she does that, we need to do our four shaft version. And this is something I've wanted to do for so long. Many years ago, I had a student come here from um, Whitehorse, Yukon, and her name was Jean Carey. And Jean brought me some little hot mats. Now, these are woven in deflected double weave, but the weft is willow. And I've always wanted to make these. So I sent my other hot mats to Lisa, who's got them at her house right now and has this amazing version of using reed on her loom. So we're still in the process of creating some of these things, but it's going to be super exciting. So it's another episode where we have a four and HF project and everybody's going to want to weave these. All right. So. We're going to have placemats, runners, all woven with natural materials. And then for our eight shafters, we have scarves that are being created and composed based on the work that we did in our four shaft, or in our gamps, our gampkins. <laughs> Those gampkins are called gampkins because they could be napkins. <laughs> cool, huh? So... There's more coming. So far, we just have two scarves in, or two designs in on um, two warps. Here's the last one. But there's more that we're working on, and I've asked Lisa to consider 
deflected double weave not going selvage to selvage, how can we superimpose that on a different graphic, all right? So always trying to tie everything together. So that is it for things that I can show you at the moment. Episode seven is me, and I haven't done anything for it yet. <laughs> so I don't have anything to tell you, but I promise by October, I will have something amazing. And I want to do something using texture. So I want to explore honeycomb on four and eight. I want to, ex in simple ways, I want to explore waffle weave. I want to explore spider weave, all kinds of weave structures that will give us texture and pattern in our cloth. So that's what I'm going to bring to you for our uh, seventh episode, and then our last episode is going to be our review. Every year we end with a review, and we just can look at all the amazing things that we have done. There are a few more things I need to tell you about. One of the great joys of my job is working with the Dream Team, 18 weavers from all over the world now, who create specific pieces to inspire you to take the theory from the lessons and how to overlay your own color sense, your own graphic style. They create projects that we show after every single episode based on what you're learning at that time. And the work is absolutely extraordinary and it's starting to come in for the episodes that we filmed already. So that's a huge bonus. You also get great PDFs um, for every single episode, for the four shaft, for the eight shaft, a theory PDF, and a project PDF. These are the binders from everything that we've done in the first eight seasons. We have to start adding season nine to them. Um, there is an awful lot of important information in these binders. You can keep notes, but this is what you get from us. All of this material is downloadable with the School of Weaving. There is a forum with the School of Weaving. If you join our school and you have a question, you can post your questions on the School of Weaving and other students will answer them or we will answer them for you. Um, so, many, so many great things come with this subscription. We also have apps. You can watch us on uh, a little iPhone, or you can watch us on a big TV with all of the six viewing platforms that we provide with the subscription. So there's an awful lot happening in the School of Weaving, and I hope that you'll come and join us for 2025. And for those of you who have been with us since day one, I hope you'll come along for the rest of the journey. And we'll see you soon. We'll see you in January. <laughs>